Chances are you have seen one of these bizarre guitars in a guitar shop near you, maybe on Saturday Night Live or something like that. We're going to be talking about the Martin Backpacker, if it's worth it to buy, if it's a novelty. What's the deal? Stick around, I'll tell you all about it. How's it going, y'all? This is Cooper Greenberg here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on, like the videos, comment on them, check out the Teespring store, get some swag, or just go to our website and find some cool guitars. Um, including this one, we have the Martin Backpacker today, the infamous travel guitar from our favorite uh, legacy guitar maker that also makes these kind of things. So the Backpacker has been around for a while. We just got them back in the store and you know the last time we had them was probably over a year ago. They sold massive success. They were always out of stock and it took a while for us to get them back in and they're here and I played one for the first time in a while and I wanted to talk about it on the channel because I don't think we've ever had this thing on here. and. Most of the people that have come in the store since we restocked in these are very interested in them. They see them half as a novelty, half as something kind of cool. Um, and I want to kind of dig into it and see if I believe it's actually worth it. So um, popularized by Horatio Sands on SNL, you've probably seen the little I Wish It Was Christmas Today jam out session with Tracy Morgan and Chris Kattan and Jimmy Fallon. That's this guitar. So we talk about strats, thanks to Jimi Hendrix and Steve Ray Vaughan, you know, Les Pauls, 335s, all that, all these famous players. This has one of the greatest rock and roll resumes of all time. But the Backpacker, this is a $299, um, as of right now, prices subject to change, $299 travel guitar that um, does not look like a lot of the other travel guitars that we carry. But this is spruce tops, pale back and sides, little guy with a tiny little headstock and um, an interesting bridge pin array here. And it is just a little guitar to take with you wherever you want to go. Now, there are a lot of good travel guitar options from Martin, from Taylor, from others. Um, I'm going to run down a few comps right now. The Little Martin, the LX1, the LX1E, the Baby Taylor, the Big Baby Taylor, the GS Mini, all of those guitars um, are more expensive than this. So I will go say Little Martin, I believe right now they're going for $399. If you add electronics, they're $499. Um, I believe it's a similar move with the Baby Taylors. I think they start at $499 and then $599. I could be wrong, it could be three and four. Um, GS Minis, you're not getting into the GS Mini line without, uh, you know, under $600, I think, right now. I think the GS Mini non-E versions, um, entry level, start at $599. They go up over 1000 now with the Koa and Rosewood Plus. And yes, a lot of those have electronics. They've got more sturdy cases. This one does come with a gig bag. But if you are heading around the country, if you've got limited space, if you're driving in your Prius or you're camping, you're backpacking, backpacker. I think that it is an interesting guitar. I do not think that it's easy to play in any way unless you have a strap. So you do have strap buttons on these. You can see in the demos that you're about to see, I'm struggling trying to figure, it's like a flying V without any support. So it is not an easy guitar to just sit down and play. You could play it like this and you're going to be a fool. You could probably, it'd be a fine lap steel guitar. But it's an interesting thing. I think that playing it, you know, it feels kind of wrong because you want more body um, for you electric heads out there. It's got a contoured heel, all right? It's got killer access to the upper register. But yeah, it's kind of bizarre to play, but I do think if you have very, very limited space, if you want something that's very inexpensive that you don't have to worry too much about, it's probably a good choice for you. And it is it does not sound terrible. It does not sound like a full-bodied acoustic guitar, you will hear. But I do not think that it is necessarily just a pure novelty or uh, just kind of something to start conversations. I think it has its place. I'm going to let you hear it. 
and then uh, we'll wrap up with my kind of final thoughts, but take a listen. So there you have it. You can hear it. You can kind of tell the sound is not what you're going to be getting from your HD28. And that's totally fine because that's not what it's trying to be. But I do think that for somebody that needs something for travel, somebody that's, you know, can bring a guitar to the office or have it just hanging out outside with them when they're sitting on the porch, I don't think it's a, a bad choice because it is relatively low investment to get something else from Martin or Taylor that's a travel size guitar, um, you're definitely stepping up and, you know, that's totally fine. If you want an LX1 or a Baby Taylor BT1, um, you know, you can spend $100 extra and get something that is similar size but has a fuller body. And then you can spend another $100 get electronics on there. Or you can spend another $100 and start kind of all over with GS Minis. Um, and there's also Dreadnought Juniors and Triple O Juniors. There's a lot of good travel options out there, and I'm not saying that this is the end-all, be-all best travel option, but you can take this thing camping, you're going kayaking, bring it on the kayak, and then, you know, just row around. It's going to be fine. Um, so I do think that it, it's worth it in a way. I think it's worth it to play one. If you're a Martin collector and you don't have a backpacker, you should probably add one to the collection because you know there will always be another 0042 out there but backpacker they're they're interesting and they're fun and they're cool but i want to hear from y'all do you have a backpacker do you think it's practical to play do you think what i played on here sounded kind of rough or do you think it sounded like a normal acoustic guitar um, and if you have one would you urge others to get one or maybe just step up to an lx1 lx1e uh, Dreadnought Junior, Triple O Junior. I think that both of those companies, you know, better than anybody right now, are finding a way to make affordable, you know, not necessarily American made, but North American made um, travel guitar options that aren't just throwing a different name to distance themselves on the headstock like some other companies do. Um, these, you know, these have Martin on them. They're Martin made. They are Martin. Soul, I think. I think that they know what they're doing and they make interesting things. And who's to say? You might fall in love with this guitar, but I want to hear what you guys think. So let me know in the comments below if you're interested in the backpacker. We've got some back in stock. Um, they should, you know, they, they should show you a good time. <laughs> uh, bring them on your trips, bring them camping. They'll be fine. You don't have to worry too much about them. And feel free to check out all the specs on our website. Give us a call, send us an email, send us a chat if you have any questions on them. Or if you're interested in any of the other travel guitars that Martin makes or any of the other ones that we carry, there's something for everybody. And I do think that having a travel guitar or a couch guitar, something that's a little smaller, a little more comfortable, um, I do think it's worth it for everybody to have one. So let me know what you think. Check out our website. Thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>